Hi, I'm John, welcome to the channel, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make a shaker style door. Okay, the first thing you need to do when you're making any type of door is measure the opening. So measure the height and measure the width. Uh, now I got that, mine is 2290 by 820. So I've got my measurements. Now I need to split them off to create the two doors because this is going to be two doors. This is for an actual project of my home. We're currently on lockdown because of the coronavirus. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to start a YouTube channel and show some of the methods that I do when I'm in work. So first of all, that's my sheet. I'm going to be using MDF. So that's my sheet of MDF. So I'm going to cut it to height and the width, but I'm going to minus five millimeters on the height. And I got a minus four millimeters on the width so far. Them doors will end up being a bit smaller um, when I split them in half because of the curve of the blade is three millimeters. So it'll make it overall seven millimeters smaller for the opening. And that's about right. You just want a, just over two mil gap in between the two ends and in the center. So I'm going to cut that panel now. And I go in a bit more into depth how I make my doors. This is the board I'm going to be using. This is 18 mil moisture resistant MDF. Uh, it's a bit better quality and a bit denser than standard MDF. I do give customers the option when um, when making my wardrobes. I always ask them if they want standard or moisture. Obviously, your moisture is a bit more expensive, so it's always down to the customer. Uh, but as is for my home, I'm going to be using the moisture resistant today. So the first thing I do, I'm going to take 10 mil off the board just to give it a nice clean cut. And then I will cut the overall width of the doors minus the four millimeters and then I can cut it in half and cut the height. So that is the doors cut to the size and the width and I've cut it in half to make the two doors. So technically I could put some hinges on that and that'd be great. Paint them up and you've got two doors. But I want to make them look a bit nicer so I'm going to do a shaker style door on this. And if you come over to my amazing drawing. So this is the effect I'm looking at. This is a, a one panel shaker door. So there's going to be no centre rail in it. Uh, this is not a bedroom. This is for a DVD unit at the bottom of my stairs. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and have it look like a, a bedroom door. Um, so I'm going to come in 100mm from the sides and 100mm from the top and bottom. So you've got a nice frame detail round and then you have a centre panel. So I use 6mm MDF for the centre panel. Um, so... I'm going to mark out the styles and rails now on my doors and then I will show you how I create the centre panel to create the shaker style door. Get 
it is all marked out so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my rail saw and i can actually cut out the center part completely so both doors cut it all out cuts now with a punch saw and obviously the biggest problem doing it this way is you can't get tight into the corners so to get that panel out and to get a nice clean cut I use a Japanese pole saw I actually do need to get a new one because this is a bit bland I've got another one around here somewhere but I can't find it at the moment it must be in the van uh, but I'm just gonna cut that now as tight as I can and as clean as I can and then I will sand the edges to get them really smooth and to get a nice neat finish. And there you have it, panels are cut out. One of the biggest downsides to doing this method is obviously getting the corners and edges really nice. So there is a bit of prep work to do now to get rid of the saw mark. So I will spend some time now sanding all these edges, getting them really smooth uh, before I go on to the next stage. I'm very lucky that I got this Merca sander to do all these edges. This was a big investment for me, but it's an absolutely amazing machine and it will be easy doing all these edges. Again, I'm really nice. Just flip the door on its front so this is the back edge and to get to make sure that the panel sits in the center i rebate nine millimeters down so half the thickness of the material and i will use a rebating bit it's just a standard this one is an actual cheap ebay one i bought uh i do recommend the trend craft pro ones they get a lot better cut on them and it lasts longer and i need to get some more but i got this one at the moment um so this will punch down nine millimeters and it will go nine millimeters into the 80 mil MDF as well. It doesn't really matter how far you go in, the further the better really, because it gives you a better gluing surface and something to nail to. Uh, this is the messy part of the job. Um, using the router, it just creates a lot of dust. So luckily I got my mask on and I also got this air filtration system that I bought from Axminster. It actually needs a bit of a clean out there. I'm cleaned it for a few weeks, so that needs to be cleaned out. But that just basically takes up all the small particles up and it filters them and blows out nice fresh air. So I'm gonna use the router now and rebate these two doors.
it. Two doors all rebated for the six mil panel to sit in there nicely. I'm just going to spend a bit more time now uh, sanding these edges and I use a two millimeter round over bit to just take off the iris of all the edges so it's not sharp and the paint will take to it nicely. This is the bit I use. It's a two millimeter, it might actually be a three millimeter bit. Uh, so slight the round over and it just gives it a nice finish on all the edges. So I do a bit more sanding and then round all the edges over and I'm ready then to cut the panels and glue and pin them in place. That's all the edges all sanded now and ready. And before I'm gonna cut the panels and stick them in, I'm just gonna see all the edges with this quick drying MDF sealer. I get it from Tool Station. It's really cheap and uh, it's really effective. You can get a real good finish. I sand all the edges to 120 grit. I apply this MDF sealer with a sponge. And then once that dries, I will sand it to 180 before I put my first coat of primer on. So I'm just gonna pull that on now. Don't have to be fussy with it, just chuck it on all the edges, let it soak in. And you can sand it all it off later. So around all the edges, it's going to be exposed. I find the sponge works best. I have tried a roller and I've tried a paintbrush, and it seems to be the sponge. It's the best method for it. the centre panel now for the shaker style door and I, that's all I do is I measure from that edge to that edge and cut it to width and then I will cut the height then after and again just measure from bottom right up to the top and then I will round over the edges with a jigsaw and then I can just glue and pin the panel in place I'm going to shake the style door will be complete then I've cut the centre panel to the width and the length uh, and now so all i got to do is obviously because of the router creating a rebate create this round section and i basically just got to do the same on this panel so I created this template years ago that just butts in the corner so I will just transfer that over draw around it in the four, or four corners and then I will just jigsaw it out um, the reason why I use um, the brown sort of standard MDF um, for the 6mm is I can't get 6mm moisture resistant MDF uh, so I've got to use the brown unfortunately so until I can get the 6mm in the, in the green in the moisture resistant I've got to use the standard.
but I'm happy how that turned out. That's all fitting nicely. So now I'm gonna glue and pin these in place and I can just give it one more sand in and it's uh, ready for its first coat of paint. As I'm waiting for them doors to dry, I just thought I'd tell you a bit about myself. My name's John, I run a company called Jones Interiors. I've recently changed my name to Jones Interiors. I used to be J. Jones Carpentry. Um, I've not stopped doing carpentry, more or less. I've started specialising in the fitted furniture, so the wardrobes, and the stairs storage, and I also fit a lot of kitchens too. And i am got an Instagram page as well, so if you could go and check that out, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I love sharing ideas and, and it's inspired me to do a YouTube channel. I'm seeing all these different people out there doing it and showing tricks and ideas. I think it's good for the industry that we all help each other out. So that's a little bit about me. I just turned the camera now and I can show you my workshop. So this is my workshop. I've um, been in it nearly a year now, it's in the year next month. It's, uh, it's been a massive help for me. I used to set up on customer's drives under the gazebo and I set up my own drive as well. And it, it was a big decision for me to have a workshop just because of the expense and everything. And it's not very big, but it's made a massive difference. Um, and I've only been in here 11 months. So it's still in work in progress. I still need to put draw fronts on and stuff like that to make it look a bit prettier. But this is my main workbench with my mic to saw. I recently bought this Craig Foreman in a tool show. Um, again, it's just one of those investments that I was a bit apprehensive about buying, but now I got it, I wish I bought it sooner. I think that's always the case. So that has made a big change to me. That's been a big help for me. Um, the way I do my wardrobes and do my work. I'm a big fan of the pocket screw, so that's definitely helped. I'm coming around now to the back wall. This is where I keep all my material. Um, it's just, this is just spur shelving that I bought from B&Q and it really helps. I can stack quite a lot up and then it takes quite a lot of weight. This, this side is, uh, is new to me. I've recently bought a vertical panel saw or wall saw people call them. I still haven't hooked it up tidy. I have bolted it to the wall and I've done an out feed table and an in feed table both sides. So all my material that's stacked there can just be pushed through the saw to cut the board. Um, down the length and then I can stack all the material there and also it's got a cross cutting um, section as well and that's mainly what I bought it for is for that action uh, I still need to get power to it and I still need to connect the dust extractor up to it I'm probably going to buy a new dust extractor that's going to go over in that corner and I can run then 100 mil hose all the way round to just um, to use for that saw um, this is one of the biggest uh, this is a project that I'm going to be doing in the next few weeks I'm going to be building a new assembly table and I'm going to also attach my table saw to the assembled table. It's going to be on wheels so I can move it around and underneath is going to be storage for the dust extractor and it's also going to be some like shelves and drawers underneath as well for just more storage. It's not the biggest workshop in the world and I probably will get will need to move um, in the next year or two but at the moment it's serving a purpose and I'm really happy how everything is going. So I think them doors are pretty much dry now so I can give them a bit more of a sand in and I can glue the centre panels in. So I'm ready to glue these panels in place now. I'm using Type On 2, it's a premium PVA glue. It's a very good, very fast acting, dries really quickly. And to just to make sure that the panel is held in place while the glue dries, I'm using this 23 gauge nailer with these 12 millimeter pins, very, very small and they just hold it in um, while the glue goes off. I've done probably 200 of these doors and I've never had a panel pop on me, so it's, uh, it works great.
And there you have it. Two shaker style doors. I'm going to sand the doors and prime them at home because the sealant haven't quite dried. Uh, and I can do that at home anyway on, on my drive. Um, there's a few benefits in doing it this way. Um, you, it's less tools required. You don't need a router, a router table. You don't need a domino to fix the panels. You don't need big clamps to clamp them together. It's, um, it's quicker because you don't have to wait for the glue to go off on the joints. There's no joints at all because it's out of one piece. So there's less chance of um, anything cracking or failing. Um, the only, there are a few, obviously, there's a few downsides too. There's a lot more waste when it comes to this because our centre panel has been cut out. That centre panel there has been cut out. You can use it, you can square it back up and use it for some drawers or some small pieces. Um, so, but it is a lot of waste. And obviously, when you turn the door around, the back edge of the door looks like that. Uh, but as long as you cut it tight enough, um, and obviously you, you could fill that if you wanted to, but I don't see no need. And the pins that I use, there's one of the pins there, so it's a very small nail, so you could fill that as well. But a lot of time the paint will just hide it anyway, so that's the back edge of the door. So there's a lot of pros in you using this method. And like I said, I've done over 200 doors in this method, and I've never had any problems. Uh, so I hope this video has helped and uh, if you like this video please click the like button and please subscribe because uh, it would just give me more incentive to make more videos. Uh, thanks very much. Bye.